If you have anxiety or depression, there is a good chance that your doctor has told you that you have low serotonin and given you a medication called a Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor, or SSRI for short. This is in order to increase the serotonin levels in your brain. But what is the evidence on which they base this? Now before I get into this, I have two important things to emphasise. One, there is lots of evidence that these medications help with anxiety symptoms, so you should definitely not stop taking your medication. And two, I have no medical training, which is why I look to research papers from places like the National Institutes of Health to form my opinion. But that opinion is based on my limited capability to understand a very complex subject. Now this is all going to get a bit technical, but please don't fall asleep or end the video, because I will try to explain this in simple terms as I go along, and in a summary at the end. So let's start with some of the technical stuff. One of the many research papers I read was one from India called Serum Serotonin Abnormality in Depression. This study measured serotonin levels and symptoms of depression before and after taking SSRIs. The results showed two interesting things. Firstly, depressive symptoms significantly improved after taking SSRIs, which was no surprise. But, secondly, the changes did not correlate with changes in blood serotonin levels, except for some patients who were suicidal who did show lower serotonin. So it would seem that although SSRIs improve symptoms for most people, it doesn't seem to be linked to the level of serotonin in your blood. So why are doctors telling you that your anxiety or depression is caused by low serotonin? Well, it's because, as seen in this study and others, SSRIs do seem to reduce the severity of symptoms for a lot of people. But the researchers in the Indian study made an interesting point. They said the fact that aspirin cures headaches does not prove that headaches are due to low levels of aspirin in the brain, which seems to me to be a valid point. However, other researchers have pointed out that measuring the actual levels of serotonin in the brain is very difficult, and blood levels may not be a true reflection of the levels of serotonin in the brain. So maybe this study in India was measuring serotonin in the wrong way. I will let the scientists argue about that one. Now some websites will tell you that if you eat foods high in L-tryptophan, like whole milk, tuna and chicken, it should increase your serotonin levels and help your anxiety or depression. But the authors of this Indian study pointed out that in studies where they gave high doses of L-tryptophan to boost serotonin, it actually failed to show relief in depression. Equally, studies deliberately depleting serotonin levels also showed no adverse effects. But let's assume that low serotonin is at least playing some role in anxiety and depression. Why should it be low? And why is there an epidemic of anxiety and depression in the modern world? Has evolution suddenly changed our serotonin levels just in the last hundred years or so? That question led me to find in this paper. Dynamics of central nervous 5-HT1 receptors under psychological stress, or PSS. This paper said... PSS caused a downregulation of 3H8OHDPAT binding sites in cortical areas and in the hippocampus. Wow, what on earth does that mean? Well, I think it means that if life throws us stresses that overwhelm our coping ability, then our brain's serotonin system does not work so well, particularly in the part of the brain that learns about danger and threats. Another paper confirmed this, saying it is likely that under chronic stress or depression, the capacity for increase in serotonin transporter has reached its limit due to the chronically elevated blood cortisol level. Or, in layman's terms, all those stress hormones that your body releases when life is tough mess up your serotonin system. Now, finally, something is starting to make sense to me, because many anxiety disorders start after a period of stress or a traumatic event. So if stress causes serotonin problems, in the part of the brain that evaluates danger, this will make the patient more anxious and therefore more stressed, which in turn further messes up the serotonin system. So how do people with anxiety ever get out of this vicious circle? Is a lifetime of medication the only option? Now it gets really interesting, because if you follow my channel, you will know that I'm a big advocate of cognitive behavioural therapy, so I got quite excited when I found a paper called Brain Serotonin Synthesis Capacity in obsessive-compulsive disorder, 
effects of cognitive behavioural therapy and sertraline. In this study, they treated one group of OCD patients with an SSRI and another group using cognitive behavioural therapy. Some of the patients improved in both groups, but what was really interesting was that the ones who improved showed signs that their serotonin system was behaving better, irrespective of whether they were treated with an SSRI medication or cognitive behavioural therapy, which is drug-free. What CBT practitioners regularly see in patients who do the given tasks and homework and reduce their safety behaviours is that their anxiety symptoms reduce gradually over the months and their capacity to deal with stress also improves. For me, this ties in nicely with an improving serotonin system. So if you are still with me, I will try to summarise in simple terms my conclusions. And again, I point out that I'm not an expert, so I could be wrong. The key points in my understanding are 1. The role of serotonin in anxiety and depression is not fully understood, but is likely involved in some way. 2. Life stresses can cause the serotonin system to misbehave. 3. SSRI medication can improve the behaviour of your serotonin system. And 4. CBT may also improve the behaviour of your serotonin system. So my key message to people who suffer anxiety is this. Keep taking your medication. But don't just accept that you were born with low serotonin and are destined to a life of anxiety with no hope. A combination of medication and therapy is probably the best solution for anxiety. And by the way, there are many studies that support this also. Finally, this last slide is for CBT practitioners and shows where I think serotonin fits in the famous CBT model. I would love to hear your thoughts and also any neuroscientists out there who may be able to enlighten me further or correct anything if I've got it wrong. Please feel free to leave a comment below. Finally, I'd be grateful if you would like and share my video. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And why not check out the many other videos that I've made on anxiety disorders.